holy name. Holy, holy, holy unto the Lord of hosts. Lord, we declare your righteousness in this house, O oh Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. It's good to be in the house of the Lord tonight. Can you say amen? Hallelujah. It's even better to be in the house of the Lord and feel his presence. Can you say amen again? Hallelujah. Amen. If you have your Bibles tonight, I'm going to take a text out of the book of Exodus. Exodus chapter 3, beginning at verse 10, and also Exodus chapter 4. We want to give honor to Pastor Anthony and the elders. Amen. The outstanding job the praise team has done leading worship tonight. Hallelujah. I ain't got time for dead church. How about you? Hallelujah. If I wanted to take a nap, I'd have stayed home in the recliner. But I come to lift up the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen, amen. <clears throat> Hallelujah. I don't believe I'll be long tonight. And everybody said praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Exodus chapter 3, verse 10. Come now therefore, and I will send thee unto Pharaoh, that thou mayest bring forth my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. Turning over to chapter 4, verse 19. And the Lord said unto Moses in Midian, Go, return unto Egypt, for all the men are dead which sought thy life. And Moses took his wife and his sons and set them upon a donkey. And he returned to the land of Egypt, and Moses took the rod of God in his hand. And the Lord said unto Moses, When thou goest to return into Egypt, See thou, do all the, those wonders before Pharaoh, which I have put in thine hand. But I will harden his heart, that he will not let the people go. And thou shalt say unto Pharaoh, Thus saith the Lord, Israel is my son, even my firstborn. And I say unto thee, Let my son go, that he may serve me. And if thou refuse to let him go, behold, I will slay thy son, even thy firstborn. And it came to pass in the way in the end that the Lord met him and sought to kill him. Then Zipporah took a sharp stone and cut off the foreskin of her son and cast it at his feet and said, Surely a bloody husband art thou to me. So he let him go. Then she said, A bloody husband thou art because of the circumcision. Tonight I want to take a topic of one way. One way. Amen. Elder Jared, you ask the Lord's blessing this night. Amen. Give the Lord a hand, praise as you're seated tonight. One way, my way. Why do we always think it has to be my way? Human beings can be some of the most stubborn, hard-headed creatures on the face of the earth. So many times we think we can do it better. We, we can come up with a, a better plan. We can come up with a, a different method. People that have been there and done that can offer sage advice, and we so many times spurn their good intentions to save us heartache only to run headlong into a stone wall. We can have a few successes, and then all of a sudden we think that uh, we know it all and can do everything our way and still have great success from now on and in every circumstance. That pro thought process would be incorrect we tend to attempt to rationalize truths that are absolute we say that you know I read such and such in the Bible but that that seems kind of hard to me uh, I, I'm surely that's not what he meant just because we don't fully understand why doesn't mean that we can change the Word of God we try many times to cut corners. We want to take shortcuts. 
We want to take shortcuts to make it easy on ourselves. Sometimes we can be non-compliant and disobedient by default, simply due to a failure to pay attention to details. We can get lazy, lackadaisical, drift off into la-la land. Here in the, the beginning chapters of the book of Exodus, we find the calling of Moses by God. Keep in mind that Moses had been saved by water 80 years prior to these chapters for the express purpose of performing the will of God. Moses had the call of God on his life. We find that Moses had been on the backside of the wilderness tending sheep. He was out, out there hanging out with Jethro, his father-in-law, Zipporah, his wife, and his two sons. And he was out tending to the sheep one day when God came calling. God came to speak to Moses. Aren't you glad that God will still speak to you today? God came to speak to Moses. God came to confer his call upon the life of Moses. This is where God began to speak to Moses from the burning bush. He called Moses and commanded to take off his sandals for he was standing on holy ground. Now we know the story and we know the story of the banter that went back and forth between God and Moses. Why is it that we have to be so hard-headed and stubborn sometimes? I mean, seriously, think about this. You hear a voice calling you by name out of a bush that spontaneously caught fire. Nobody struck a match. There were no bicks to flick. This bush catches fire, it's, but it's not being burned up, and you question the validity of the call. I mean, seriously, we can have a sovereign move of Almighty God with tongues and interpretation, with the Holy Ghost so thick in the sanctuary that you can cut it with a knife, and yet you doubt that God is calling you to do something for Him. Seriously? Let me let you in on a little secret. The devil won't tell you to do anything good. The devil will never, ever tell you to reach for a soul. The devil will not tell you to go help somebody. The devil will not tell you to go pray for somebody. Well, 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 well what if it's just me? What if, it's just, what if God didn't tell me to do What if it's just me? So what if it was? So what if it was just you? Uh, your heart was in the right place. Um... You're not hurting somebody. You're actually trying to help somebody. You're going to pray for them. Step out on faith and see what God will do through you. See what God will do when you step out on faith and say, you know, I, I, I feel something. And you step out there, even if it wasn't God, I promise you, God will honor your faith. I mentioned it just a time or two back that I preached. Remember, nowhere in the scripture can you find where God told Elijah to go tell Ahab it's not going to rain anymore. Elijah, perhaps Elijah just had a burden. Perhaps Elijah was just fed up and stepped out on faith and said, I've had enough. We need to cop an attitude sometimes and tell the devil, I've had enough. I'm going to step out on faith and I'm going to take hold of my faith and I'm going to do something with it. I'm going to reach for somebody. I'm going to pray for somebody. I'm going to help somebody. We finally get past all the banter, and Moses is finally on his way to do what God told him to do. And we, we catch up to him in the text in chapter 4, and then we find in verse 24 that God's going to kill him. What? Wait, 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 time out, time out, time out. This, this man was called of God. He's on his way to do the will of God, and God's going to kill him? What's up with that? 
What's up with that? Well, I mean, whoa, 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 wait, wait just a minute right here. This was the man of God. He had a purpose in his life. He had a mission to complete. He was on his way to do the will of God, and yet the scripture says that God was going to kill him. And it came to pass, by the way, in the end, that the Lord met him and sought to kill him. Right there it is in black and white. What's up with that? Let me explain it to you. He was called, not entitled. He was called, not entitled. Moses was, in fact, trying to do the will of God, but he was trying to do it his way. He was trying to do things his way. He was neglecting the commandments of God. He was neglecting the law of God. He was not being obedient to what God had told him to do. He was not being obedient to how he was raised. He obviously was not paying attention to detail and doing what he was supposed to be doing. I don't care how much you dance in the aisles and sing to the top of your lungs, feel the call of God to preach, you're never so good that you don't need to follow the rules. You can be doing the will of God. You can be doing the work of God. But if you're not following the word of God, you got a problem. <laughs> Moses had not kept the law of the seed of Abraham of circumcision for his sons. Circumcision was the Old Testament sign of separation. It signified whose family tree you belong to. It signified that you were a son of Abraham, that you were a child of promise, and that you were God's chosen people. Circumcision is typified in the Old Testament of what baptism in the name of Jesus Christ does for the church today. It sets us apart from everybody else. We are the people of the name. There is a difference when we pray because we have authority, because we have the authority in the name of Jesus Christ. And it comes through that separation and following his word. Moses had not kept the law and had not identified his family with the seed of Abraham. And if we fail to follow the word, if we fail to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, we too will fail to identify ourselves as to who we belong to. Let me remind you, there's only one way, and that's Jesus Christ. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. I believe that this was the express point and reason for the issue that God was going to kill him, but also as a general overall point of just doing what God told him to do. I believe God expects us to do what he tells us to do. I believe God expects us to do what's in the book. Regardless of what society says, regardless of what people consider politically correct regardless of what everybody else just winks at and says well it's okay they still love God in their heart well if you love God in your heart let's see it on the outside too God was emphasizing that there is only one way and it must be his way Moses was called not entitled and neither are you we are all called. None of us are entitled. We've been called to do a work for God. Everybody here has been called to be a minister of the gospel. Let me explain that to you. A minister is not just a preacher. A minister is somebody that does something for God. And for years, the bishop preached, every member is a minister. Every one of us have a job to do. Every one of us have a service to offer. You're called to be a minister, but that does not mean you're entitled to do it all your way. 
You have no right to do it your way. You have no right to live any old way you please. The Bible says that no prophecy of the Scripture is of any private interpretation. So you can't give any Scripture a personal little uh, interpretation just to suit what you want to do and justify why, what you want to do. I mean, honey, you might be special, but you're, you're not special enough to do everything and anything in any way you want to please. If you're to be used by God, you've got to do it His way. You may have had a burning bush experience. You may have heard the voice of God. But every aspect of your life and walk with God must be in accordance to His Word. You may have been mightily used to perform His will recently or at some point in your past. But remember that He once also used a donkey to perform His will and speak His Word so it's no new miracle that He could do it again. Sometimes we get to thinking ourselves a little too high and mighty. Woo, I felt the Holy Ghost there. I believe I can just live any way I want to now. I've been holy, sanctified and glorified and all that other stuff. That's not what the book said. If you want to see His glory continually manifest in your life, you must do everything His way, and that doesn't stop just at baptism. It all must be in accordance to his word. We've got to quit looking for the, the shortcut and the easy way out. I want to be obedient to his word and his will, and I want to do everything his way. My way. While there may be something to be said for some personal determination and efforts in our lives when it comes to the things of God, his will and His ways. There is a great fallacy with that kind of thinking and those efforts. I want to put great effort, but I want to put great effort to do it His way, not my way. Too many times I hear people say, well, I think, see, that's where they get in trouble. There are a lot of things you need to think about, but there's a lot more all you got to do is read about. Well, I, I see what that, that says right there, but I really don't think that's what it means. If that's what it says, then that's what it means. If... Uh, can, I be, can I be honest this morning, this evening? There are some things I've read in that book from time to time that, Brother Smith, I just didn't want to live up to. But if I want to make it to heaven, there's only one way, and that's his way. So I've got to make myself behave and line up to what's in the book. It must be his way because he is the way. No, you may not do it your way. It must be his way. Would the musicians come? The untended garden will soon be overrun with weeds if the heart fails to cultivate truth and root out error. Otherwise, our lives will, in short order, be a theological wilderness. There's so many people that identify themselves as being Christian that know so little about what's in the book. Sadly, I've heard, listened to, talked to so many individuals that call themselves preachers that couldn't preach their way out of a wet paper bag because they don't know what's in the book. If God be God over us, we've got to yield Him universal obedience in all things. He must not be over us in one thing and under us in another. 
He's got to be, he must be over us in everything. The fruit of the Spirit grows only in a garden of obedience when we align ourselves with God's Word. It's our business that we do right. God will see that we come out right. It's only where a man is at one with God that he can do the right things or take the one right way. Whatever springs from any other source than the spirit that dwelled in Jesus is sin and works to thwart the divine will of God. Doing the will of God is the way to oneness with Him and doing things the one way. Can we all stand tonight? The world is hurting and in pain. Millions of people have nowhere to turn and are instead misdirected down the wrong road of religion with no power because there is no obedience to the Word of God. They have a form of godliness but deny the power thereof. There's only one way to ultimately stop the pain and suffering, one way to save the lost, one road, one way which leads to heaven. That one way is through Jesus Christ and lining up to His Word. Don't be fooled and don't be deceived into believing that there's many roads to heaven as Oprah Winfrey would like you to believe. It's just not true. There's one way. Many are preaching false doctrines and lead many lost into eternal destruction. If you want to follow the one way, will you come tonight? I want to invite everyone in the house. If you've got a determination that you're going to stay on the one way, can we come and gather for a time of prayer tonight? Say, you know what? There's one way, and I want to be on the way. I want to be on the way not just in the way. The truth is the truth. Don't let anybody deceive you. Many false prophets will arise in these last days, but Jesus Christ is the only way for salvation. There is no other way. The Apostle Paul wrote, One Lord, one faith, one baptism. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. He is the one way. I want to be on my way, on that one way. How about you tonight? Can we pray and ask the Lord to help us to be true to His Word, faithful to His Word, faithful to His call, faithful to His truth, faithful to walk in the ways of righteousness. Lord, we come before you right now, dear God. Help us, O oh Lord, to align our lives with your word. Lord, Lord to walk in your way, O oh Lord, to walk in your will. To God, to align our lives in every aspect with your word, to walk in the ways pleasing to you, O oh God. Lord, help us to be what you'd have us to be, O oh Lord, to be about your business, O oh God. every breath that I take, every moment I'm
to the Lord tonight. God, we raise our hands and we surrender ourselves to you. We raise our hands and we surrender ourselves to you. God, you are not our own. I give you everything tonight, Lord. We are not our own. We give you everything, Lord. you to find two or three people to look at them right square in the eyes and tell them 
I know there's only one way and I'm going to walk in that way. Tell him. There's only one way and I'm going to walk in that way. There's only one way and I'm going to walk in that way. Amen. Amen. There's only one way and I give myself to that way tonight. Can you say amen? Amen. How many is thankful you know who he is? If you're thankful, would you put your hands together and give God praise and thank you.